Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm answering a viewer question about what triggers the mood swings that you can see in borderline personality disorder. One of the features of borderline personality disorder that make it look like bipolar disorder is having wide mood swings. I compared borderline personality disorder to bipolar disorder in this video. But the gist of it is with borderline personality disorder, you get quick shifts in moods that can last hours or even a day. Whereas with bipolar disorder, you get shifts in mood states that last for a minimum of four days for hypomania and two weeks for depression. So Parissa asks, I have a question about mood swings in BPD. Is it always a reason behind it? Because my psychologist said to me that there is, but most of the time it seems like it comes from nowhere. Thanks for the question, Parissa. I agree with your psychologist that with borderline personality disorder, the shifts in mood from high to low to irritable to elated are triggered in some way. The catch is the trigger may not always be conscious. That is, it may not always be identifiable to you what's triggering you. Remember, one of the symptoms of borderline personality disorder is having a very high sensitivity to feeling abandoned or rejected in some way. So one of the most common triggers is something that goes on in a relationship. For example, a friend can say, hey, I went to lunch with this friend from work and it was a really great restaurant. I think you'd love it. And you may say, yeah, thanks for telling me, maybe I'll go. But after you get off the phone, you feel really down and think, yeah, I'd like to try that restaurant, but I guess I'll have to go by myself. I don't have anyone who wants to take me to lunch. How many friends do I really have anyway? Why don't people think about me when they wanna go out? You start imagining everybody doing stuff together and not really thinking about you. So you spiral down into this self-loathing, no one cares about me state. But in reality, while your friend was out having lunch with someone else, she was thinking about how her friend would like this restaurant. So she's thinking about you, even when she's having fun with someone else but you were threatened by that one statement that seemed innocent on the surface, but it made you spiral into negative thinking. Another symptom of borderline personality disorder is feeling empty. And this is an internal vulnerability that can make you unravel in the settings of stress, boredom, or any kind of frustration. And these are factors that can happen while you're alone and does not involve a relationship dynamic. With borderline personality disorder, you can experience dissociative symptoms like depersonalization and derealization. With depersonalization, you feel disconnected from yourself. You can look in the mirror and not recognize your own face, or you can feel like you're watching yourself go through, your, through the day. With derealization, you could look out of the window and see a tree, and the tree seems like it's moved further away now, kind of like tunnel vision. And this can be very disturbing and unsettling. And these dissociative episodes can just happen. And then when they happen, they can make your mood flip from feeling peaceful to suddenly fearful. And as the dissociative experience goes away, you can start to feel better and you're back to your usual self. So within a matter of hours, you went from feeling fine to panicked. Another big trigger is memories of trauma. Many people with borderline personality disorder have been abused in the past, maybe in childhood or young adulthood, or you may have had a series of emotionally abusive relationships. So you can be sitting outside enjoying some sun and have a memory of sitting on the beach with an abusive partner. And that two second memory can make you feel overwhelmed with despair. There are times that you have a memory of something that flashes across your, your mind so quickly that you don't make the connection between the behavior and the emotions that you're currently experiencing and something that happened in the past. Therapy is something that can help you make these connections so that you don't have to be as overwhelmed by the emotions that seem like they're coming out of nowhere. 
If you start by understanding that the intense emotions do come from somewhere, then you can learn to accept the emotions, process them, and let them pass without overwhelming you. In dialectical behavior therapy, you learn to do this with lessons on distress tolerance and emotion regulation. And there's a lot of strategies that are taught in dialectical behavior therapy. Take a look at this video that I did on managing negative emotions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.